morning of April the 2nd, residents of the temporarily occupied in Narhodar gathered for a peaceful rally in support of Ukraine. People sang the anthem and communicated. When the protesters began to disperse, they were surrounded by the Russian military. Paddy wagons approached, and the occupiers began to put the protesters in the vehicles. There was also a series of explosions and machine gun fire. The head of the Zaporizhia Regional Military Administration, Oleksandr Staruch, said that four people were injured in the crackdown. 86 Ukrainian servicemen returned from captivity. The exchange took place on April the 1st in the Zaporizhia region. This was announced by the deputy head of the president's office, Kirilo Tomoshenko. According to him, 15 of these servicemen are women. They were provided with all necessary assistance, including medical. Now they are heading to the meeting place with representatives of the command of their units, and later they will be able to see relatives. Russian occupation forces blocked the movement of a convoy of cars leaving Militopol for Zaporizhia on April 1. More than 400 cars are still parked in Vasilivka. The Russian military let only buses pass, and cars are still at the checkpoint. More than 2,000 residents were evacuated from Melitopol yesterday. But the same day the Russian occupiers at the checkpoint in Vasilivka let only buses pass, not private cars. And more than 400 cars were parked at the checkpoint in Vasilivka yesterday and had to stay overnight at the territory of a plant. They are not allowed through the checkpoint. These are two thousands of our Ukrainian citizens who are being held hostage by the Russian occupiers, and even worse, they are used as a human shield at Vasilivka checkpoint. They know their surnames, names, numbers of cars for some identification, check, and only after that they will consider the possibility of admission to the territory controlled by Ukraine. The number of victims as a result of rocket attack of Mykolaiv Regional Administration has increased to 35 people. This was announced by the head of the administration, Vitaly Kim. 33 bodies were pulled out from the rubble. Two people died at the hospital. To remind, the Russian troops fired rockets at Mykolaiv Regional Administration in the morning of March the 29th. As a result of the impact, the central section from the 9th to the 1st floor in the 9-story building collapsed. The search for people under the rubble of the regional administration building is still ongoing. Near the city of Severodonetsk on April 2, Russian occupation forces fired on a gas pipeline. As a result, almost the entire region has been left without gas supply. The head of Luhansk Regional Military Administration, Serhii Haidai, said that the accident site is in the zone of active hostilities, and the repairmen do not have the opportunity to get there. Severodonetsk and nearby settlements have been left without gas. That's about 60,000 consumers. During the day, the cities of Severodonetsk, Rubizhne, Lysychansk, Kreminna, Hirske, Popasna, and the settlements of Berezove and Toshkivka came under fire. 31 buildings have been damaged or destroyed there. On the night of April the 2nd, Russian troops shelled Poltava region. The city of Poltava was targeted with strikes. Four missiles hit the city's infrastructure objects. No one has been killed or injured so far. The situation is eliminated. As for the city of Kremenchuk, the situation there is more complicated. A large number of missiles hit industrial enterprises. The rescuers are putting out the fire. In Kremenchuk, according to preliminary information, there are wounded and probably dead. Also on the night of April the 2nd, the Russian occupiers struck at Dnipropetrovsk region. According to the head of Dnipropetrovsk Regional Military Administration, Volontin Reznichenko, the infrastructure facility in Dnipro was severely damaged. Two people were injured. The Russian military also hit a gas station in Krivirich. No one was injured or killed. Rescuers put out the fire. On April the 1st, after a lengthy search near the village of Huta Mozhehirska in Kyiv region, police found Ukrainian photographer and documentary filmmaker Max Levin dead. There had been no contact with him since March the 13th. That day he went to document the consequences of Russian aggression. It later became known that intense fighting had begun in the area. Levin was killed by the Russian military. Max Levin worked in the editorial office of LPUA Media, collaborated with Reuters, BBC, TRT World, Associated Press, Hromatske. His photos were published by the Wall Street Journal, Time 
and others.